All right, hello and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for our virtual info session, why I chose the Brown School. My name is Sarah Birch and I'm an admissions and recruitment specialist for the Brown School and I am joined by four current Brown School students who are gonna chat a little bit about their journey to the Brown School. We know that those of you watching are at various stages of applying, thinking about applying, you've been admitted, and now what's next? And so we want to just talk through kind of why our students here chose to come to the Brown School, what things to consider while you are considering all your options, because we do know that you have a lot of options, and some of you might be considering programs all across the country or the world. Um, but we do believe that our curriculum, our field work opportunities, our faculty are all reasons why the Brown School is a really strong choice for studying social work, public health, and social policy. And we also know that our student community, uh, it's in the culture here, have a lot to offer for students who are considering graduate studies at the Brown School. So we'll delve into that a little bit with our panelists. I'd like to introduce you to each of our panelists, and if you could just share your name, your background, what year you are in your program, um, your academic interests, and then also um, some things that you're involved in here at the Brown School. We'll start here. Hello all. So my name is Caitlin Davis. I'm a first year MSW student concentrating in mental health. Um, oh, she, her, hers are my pronouns. And my academic interests, honestly, after this I plan on being in someone's PhD in psychology program. So I plan to be a psychologist one day, so fingers crossed. Awesome. Thanks, Caitlin. Perfect. <coughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ashwarya Nagar and I am a second year Master of Public Health student here at the Brown School. I'm specializing in global health and my interests are around gender equity, global health, emergency response, just a smorgasbord of things. Um, I am a student ambassador with the Office of Admissions and um, I'm involved in a bunch of other things. I do research on campus, I'm a part of a couple of student groups, uh, but yeah, that's me. Hello. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Melanie Liu, she, her, hers. I am a Brown School student as well as an MBA student at the Olin Business School. So this is my second year at WashU, and I'm interested in social economic equity and nonprofit management when I graduate. Um, currently, I'm working for the Anika Rodriguez Scholars Program, which is an undergraduate program that gives scholarships and forms of support for students who identify as Latinx, as well as communities that are, are passionate about community service. My name is Jonathan, he, him, his, second year MSW student. Uh, I am an individualized MSW concentration, so pulling from health, mental health, violence and injury prevention, and children, youth, and families. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. Um, and my in area of interest, I suppose, is um, working with families and children who have been exposed to trauma intergenerationally or just within um, the context of that own family system. Awesome, thank you all so much. So as I mentioned, Throughout the session, we are really just gonna chat about what each of your journeys looked like to the Brown School and why you ultimately chose to come here for your grad studies. And I'll be asking questions that were submitted before the session. I'll also be asking questions that you submit during the session. So if you would like to submit que uh, questions, if you're watching this live, that's great and we'll do our best to get to those at the end. Um, so just to start, I would love to hear, you know, when you were applying to graduate schools, what were you looking for in a program? Um, what kinds of things were you kind of checking out, seeking more information about? Um, and we can start with Caitlin, if you'd like. Sure. Um, I was definitely looking at location. I felt like I had to be happy wherever my school was going to be, because I feel like as a student, obviously, like most of your life will be <laughs> at school. But the other 20% of free time that you have definitely be spent outside of that, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And so I was definitely looking at location, um, affordability of the um, environment or like the you know surrounding neighborhoods of the school. Um, and then uh, of course the school's reputation um, specifically for the program that I applied to. So yeah. Great, yeah. thanks. Ishwari, if you could Yeah, change. so with public health programs, there's a lot of different directions you can go with them. Um, most of the public health programs I was finding were sort of encased under a school of medicine program. Or they were very clinically focused or they were large schools with um, like a three-year employment requirement before you joined. 
Uh, so what I was looking for was a really strong, robust curriculum that was focused on equity and not just gaining clinical skills. Um, I was also looking at affordability. That was a really big criterion for me. Um, and then in addition to that, I was looking for research opportunities. So were there um, professors with similar interests to mine with whom I could work? Were there research centers that I could um, work with uh, while I was in school? Uh, and then also uh, with public health, usually there's a practicum sort of a component. So I was looking to see what kind of practicum opportunities were available within each school's network. So a lot of different criteria, but the Brown School fell at the intersection of all of those. When I was applying to social work programs, I was serving with City Year in Los Angeles. And if you're a core member out there, thumbs up. And it's really, it's really time consuming. I worked about 50 hours a week, so I did not have time to apply to 10 different schools. Instead, I looked into about 10 different schools, um, listed on an Excel document, and sorted them by the amount of scholarship they offer to core members, because City Year does mm -hmm. offer partnerships with many universities, and WashU was one of them. And I narrowed down by uh, ranking and um, how much scholarship was offered, and that was how I decided um, Brown School was the best choice. And um, I realized that there are a lot of other value propositions when I arrived at the Brown School. Um, WashU also uh, um, includes a lot of different joint degree programs outside mm -hmm. of the MBA. We have um, Masters of Architecture, education, um, divinity, um, many things that you can find mm -hmm. online as well. And um, as, why, as, as why I mentioned, um, Brown School is really focused on praxis, which is um, integrating theory and practice. So that's what we get a lot in within our field work. Awesome. Yeah, um, so my, like, my freshman or sophomore year of undergrad, I heard about the Brown School. So it was kind of always within the mix of the possibilities. Um, but I also did apply to several other schools. Um, primarily, kind of my journey and what I was looking for was um, a curriculum that I was able to kind of customize. As I mentioned earlier, I was able to really individualize and do exactly what I wanted to do with my time here at the Brown School, which I think is really important and something that kind of sets us apart from other schools. Um, as well, just the connection with the community, I think, is really important. In undergrad, I did a lot of the community work. Um, through my um, majors, and so that was a really important component too. There's a lot of folks that go out into the community for practicum, for research, for other volunteer opportunities as well. So those were kind of the really important things. And then as well, affordability of the area, and then reputation of the school too. Great, thank you all so much. And I heard this a little bit in Melanie's answer and Jonathan's as well, uh, but that there were things that once you got to the Brown School, you found that maybe you didn't necessarily consider before. So I'd love to hear um, from Caitlin too, and also Ashwarya, if there were things that you didn't know to look for in schools, but that you were really happy to find once you got to the Brown School, what those might have been. You want to start? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I would definitely say the fact that you can tailor your experience here. Um, I did not know that you could tailor your like concentration area or the fact that they had specializations. You could e e also, my apologies, you could also um, tweak those. Um, and also the freedom of choosing a practicum mm -hmm. um, because from you know like other programs, like you don't uh, typically get to choose your own practicum. You kind of just get placed in one. Mm -hmm. And I like that the Brown School really promotes um, agency over mm -hmm. our, you know, our experience here and like, you know, want us to have full blown control over what our experience looks like. And uh, I didn't know that it was gonna be so unique yeah. to each student, which is good. You can literally make this experience what you want it to be. And I love that freedom. So definitely didn't see that coming, but I'm <laughs> glad that I found that here. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. I completely agree with that. Um, what I found surprising in a good way and have loved making a part of my life here are the mentorship experiences. I think I went into grad school hoping that I would find good mentors, but I'm overjoyed at the fact that I have found several doing exactly what I want to do, um, giving me advice that is so um, pertinent to what I believe in, what I want to do after graduate school. Um, so finding those right type of mentors was a big deal for me. Um, but then also after that, just WashU's connection with the St. Louis community, Brown School's connection with the St. Louis community was something I didn't necessarily anticipate, but I'm so glad to have learned from. 
Um, mm -hmm. Like right off the bat during orientation, there's so many sessions around like why you are, or you know, just more about the social context of where you are and how instead of you sort of bringing your own ideas into St. Louis, you can learn from St. Louis and become a part of St. Louis. <coughs> so that's something I really enjoyed as well. And then also what Melanie was saying, I've been, um, I really learned from uh, folks in other disciplines and other schools. Um, so there's several student groups here that are focused on bringing together interdisciplinary populations. Um, and so I've learned from that, not only just socially and just, you know, you, you make friends across disciplines, but it has strengthened my public health, being able to understand things from like a business supply chain perspective or like a clinical, like global surgery sort of a perspective. Not that I'm an expert in either of those things. Um, but yeah, so those are three things I really was surprised by. That's great. Anything that you two would like to add? Feel good about that? I do agree with what Caitlin and Ashwarya mentioned. I definitely, I never had anything custom made for me, a dress, <laughs> mug, or anything, until I came to the Brown, Brown School where they really custom made my curriculum, and it's amazing. And I do agree with the mentorship and the huge network that we have here in St. Louis. We have so many different nonprofits, uh, community development corporations are involved with, within um, the social justice field. So a lot of folks that work at the Brown School are easily able to connect us to these different um, organizations to collaborate or even um, intern for, or even potentially find jobs after we graduate. Awesome. Yeah, I think just underscoring really what everyone has said, um, I think really specifically I got really connected to the community within my, just within my first couple of uh, months here at the Brown School while participating in like a graduate policy scholar program, which encourages us to go out into the community and um, collaborate with local agencies that are working on policy and grassroots initiatives. And that was a really cool experience that I didn't necessarily believe that I was going to come into. Um, I'm very much clinically focused. Um, so being able to have that very policy rooted experience um, was I think an incredible opportunity to really get connected with the local St. Louis community. That's great, thank you all. So I'd love to hear a little bit too about just why did you ultimately choose the Brown School? What was it that made you realize this is the right place for you? And if you can think back to that, like making that decision, enrolling, um, if you applied to any other schools, that was a question that we received before, but what was it that made you choose the Brown School over other programs? And anyone can start talking about that. I think that like the big thing was the feeling that I got from the community when I came for Admitted Students Weekend. Um, it was the first time I had ever visited the Brown School, really the first time I had ever been to St. Louis even. Um, and so just the community that I like fostered and connected with in just that short like 48 hour time period I thought was really so impactful and so special. Um, and I was surrounded by a lot of people who I knew were gonna do awesome things so I wanted to also become a part of that group of people doing awesome things. So I narrowed down my list of 10 to two schools, including the Brown School, obviously. And the Brown School really stood out compared to the other school because folks were corresponding with me all the time, even before I got admitted. I was getting emails from admissions, and it's interesting because I ended up working for admissions for an amount of time. So there's so much intentionality in working with the students. And I would get emails just saying, hey, we saw that you have opened your application, you got started. Um, and we just want to check in to see if you're going to can, you know, continue working on it and if you have any questions, we can support you. And I just really appreciated that. And after I got in, it was still the same amount of um, support that I got, but it was some that were just more specific. Like here is our Facebook group. Um, here are different types of um, resources that you can connect to. And I think it really solidified when I, I did come to the Brown School to visit. I got a specialized tour and I met with um, Joshua Lewa, who works for the admissions office. He's just super down to earth. And I remember at one point, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a charger for my Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> and he just randomly gave me one. He was like, well, just wait here. And then he gra grabbed it for me. And he was like, take it, I don't need it. And it was just that really personal um, connection that I had with folks here. Yeah. I kind of wish I had visited the Brown School before <laughs> I made my decision. I made my decision based on um, email correspondences and like what's on the website and my connections in this area. Uh, but it came down to cost at the end of the day. I was choosing between here and another school. And the Brown School offered me a very competitive scholarship, which made this experience far less stressful <laughs> than it would have otherwise been. 
Um, the other MPH program was in the School of Medicine, um, and so I also ended up making a choice between value. So did I want a program that would equip me with some you know, standard skills that I could learn at any point in my life course, or did I want to go to a school that would equip me with the right values that I needed to mm. like, do no harm in the field? That's like my biggest personal anxiety, that my public health would do harm in a community. Um, so really, uh, the fact that this was uh, paired up with a social work program and now a social policy program was very attractive to me. So I really wanted to learn from those values. I wanted equity be to be the focus of my public health. Um, so at the end of the day, just the values of the Brown School and then the cost was kind of a big decision for me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It was just so, <laughs> it was beautiful. I, I moved. Um, <laughs> um, if I'm being 1,000% honest, academically, there was never any competition. WashU was al always like top choice for me personally. Um, and I had already made the decision that if I had gotten into WashU that I would be going. And by some grand miracle, here I am. Um, but then they also offered me scholarship money. I did get accepted to other schools, but if I'm being realistic and practical, um, WashU was the better choice financially as well. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, that's great. Thank you all. And it, a few of you have talked about that, the financial piece of it being a really important factor. And we've gotten a lot of questions about that submitted beforehand about that financial piece and kind of how do you navigate that with scholarships and financial aid. So I'd love to hear if maybe one or two of you can talk about kind of what that looks like and what that process was like for you and any advice that you would have for folks who are considering the Brown School, but the financial aid piece is a, a really big factor. I guess. Yeah, go ahead. Um, speak to that. Um, I would say advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the school, like as long as you, so I don't know if they got to this point in the process yet, but the Brown School offers you an opportunity to get scholarships through an interview, like an online interview. Definitely take advantage of that. Um, but if you find that you I have not been given the money, like the amount of money that you feel um, is you know, necessary, I would say definitely um, email financial aid and vocalize that. They actually listen and they really do try their best to uh, pull money from places or put you onto a scholarship or two or three that you know, no one else was, you know, even thought about applying to. Um, mm -hmm. They really help you out. They work with you. So advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say with that too, um, you know, there are a lot of options and resources that you can pull from and advocating for yourself and that is really important. Um, while, you know, merit-based scholarships, that process is pretty in-depth and holistic on our end. Um, there are other ways that we can connect you with funding resources too. And so chatting with our assistant director of financial aid, Katie Noonan, to see where are those other options? Could it be a need-based scholarship? Could it be a fellowship opportunity? Um, so things like that, we're more than willing to chat with you about other places where we could help to find that financial support. Anything else to add from mm -hmm. you all? Yeah, just adding on to what Keila spoke about um, on advocacy. Um, some folks might feel like they don't qualify or don't fit into a, a particular scholarship. It doesn't hurt to ask. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the scholarships are focused for um, a specific population and um, just because you perceive yourself to not really be fitting in it might not be true so definitely reach out and ask and um, as I mentioned before a lot of AmeriCorps programs have um, a scholarship with um, the Brown School so check into that as well um, I myself am also a work-study student so that definitely helps um, so apply for work study if you feel like you're able to work um, during the school year um, in your your FAFSA application Thank you. And then there was a question too about just like, even though we know it does cost a lot to come here, what makes it worth it to you? If you can speak to that, Ashwarya or Jonathan or, or Caitlin or <laughs> Melanie, anyone? Just, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't talk because I was about to cough. Um, <laughs> um, I think that just like the opportunities available to us to like pick our own practicum placements, to choose the courses that we want to take if we want to truly individualize our path of study. Um, 
the connections to people who are really like leading the forefront of a lot of really awesome research initiatives mm -hmm. is really cool too if you're into research. Um, some really great policy opportunities for folks interested in policy and community organizing. There's just a lot of great opportunities here that I didn't necessarily think that I would find when I came here um, and just comparing to other schools too. There's just a wealth, I think, of opportunity here. Melanie mentioned there's a lot of non-profits in the area um, and a lot of just like a great network of alum from the Brown School too that are super supportive of current students um, with regard to like networking and finding practicum placements mm -hmm. and jobs after graduation. Um, so there's just a lot of opportunity and a lot of support resources too for our mm -hmm. students through like advising and academic affairs and career services, all those great things that we have in-house, um, which I think is really cool and pretty unique to our school. Yeah. I echo that completely. Just once you get here, um, I, I have been privileged to forge really cool relationships with my faculty, and they have pointed me to all sorts of like amazing articles and journals, or like now that I'm working with a faculty member, um, I have the opportunity to get published with them, or just um, one of my research professors took a chance on me after I did a practicum with her and was like, hey, do you want to work with me? And now we're working on manuscripts together. Just having access to all these opportunities that require more in-depth connections and being in a vulnerable place, I think that's a, a, an opportunity I did not anticipate having and really value. That makes it worth it. The professional connections, the personal development opportunities, it makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. And if I could add one quick thing, um, if I'm being, again, 1,000% honest, um, what doors won't open with Wash you on your resume? Yeah. That's the question that I, I mean, th yeah. these are things that I've on honestly considered. Um, so what makes it worth it to me is that the, the, even the name of Washington yeah. University in St. Louis will open so many doors for you and it, it is a privilege to even be in that position. So yeah. that makes mm -hmm. it worth it. That's great. Yeah, that's such a good point. Um, just having the, the connections and the resources and network that is afforded through our institution is really strong. Um, I do see that we have a lot of questions coming in about scholarships still, and I wanted to clarify a little bit uh, about the interview process for merit-based scholarship and what that means. So when you apply to the Brown School, you are, in, if you ask to be considered for merit-based scholarship, you will be invited to um, do an interview online and that will be used in combination with your application to assess for your eligibility for merit-based scholarship. And so that um, will qualify you for one merit-based scholarship consideration, one award, um, and other, other sources of scholarship or funding will come from outside of that. So while the interview and your application to the program is just for one merit-based scholarship award, other opportunities will come from things like fellowships that are outside of the Brown School, or a master's research fellowship that is within the Brown School, or a need-based application or scholarship that has a separate application too. Um, so hopefully that clarifies some things, and if you do still have questions about the scholarship, let us know. Um, I do want to get to some other questions that were submitted beforehand um, and during this session, just being mindful of time. So um, one of the questions that was submitted before was about the public health program and um, the ranking. And so the question, and I'm going to read it because um, I, I love how it's worded, but the Browns, Brown School is my top choice and I am thrilled that I was accepted to the program. We're thrilled that you're going to be considering coming here. Um, while I understand the university has spearheaded research in the field of public health, I had received feedback from colleagues asking me about the university's ranking. I understand that the list of top public health programs according to US News is not the most credible source. However, I do need a succinct response for why the Brown School is not ranked. Any insight to responding to that question would be helpful. And uh, I do have a really succinct response. Uh, it is because up until this year, U.S. News and World Report did not rank public health programs. They only ranked public health schools. So this year we should be arriving on that ranking list, but I do appreciate you saying it's, uh, there's a lot of things that to be considered with looking at rankings and other things too, um, and that's just one piece of understanding the, the success of the, the public health program, and Ashwarya can speak to that a little bit too. Yeah, it's uh, like I mentioned with public health because there's so many different um, 
disciplines that have a stake over it or have a, like, you know, they think, oh, public health is ours. Like, schools of medicine think, okay, like, I think we should be the ones in charge of public health programs. Um, that's why up until now, uh, the public health programs that have been ranked are schools. Uh, so it's important to look beyond just schools. There are programs like ours that offer such amazing opportunities and resources. So I would also consider looking at or er, incorporating programs and then like associated programs in your consideration. Uh, but yeah, the rankings are a little skewed, so hopefully we're on there soon. <laughs> yeah, so too. Um, and we will be this year, so that should hopefully help. Um, so next question I want to ask, what do you think is the best characteristic of the Brown School? I think for me, I would easily say the research opportunities. I'm very passionate about it. That's something I wanted to explore more during my time at the Brown School because I didn't have much experience with public health research specifically. But with around like 13 research centers and several research initiatives, it's hard not to get sucked into that life. Um, and so I really appreciated that I can get like professional experience and something I want to do um, simultaneous to my like academic experience over here. That's my favorite Brown School characteristic. Great. I would say for me, oh, unless someone else wants yeah, to. Okay. Ahead. I would say All for years. me the best <laughs> characteristic of the Brown School is that they um, they kind of give off this vibe of we're lucky to have you instead of you feeling like oh I'm lucky to be here. Um, and of course, in, uh, in my experience so far, first generation, person of color, woman of color, um, low SES, like all, that, all those things, all those backgrounds, um, I would say that there's something called the imposter syndrome that I mm -hmm. have experienced before, and I am not the only one and will not be the last one. Um, but I would say that being here got me over it, actually, um, even if I've ever mentioned it or even without mentioning it, I feel like the faculty and staff here are aware that that is actually a thing for students. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And they made it a point to make sure that they, they, they wanted to make sure that I knew that I belonged here, that I had a place here. Mm -hmm. So that for me is very near and dear to my heart and that's, that's what I would say is the best characteristic. That's great. That's yeah, I think you. echoing that too, just like support not just from like resources and from faculty and staff, but also from like each other. Um, I've met some incredible people here at the Brown School, a lot of really genuine, kind and caring folks, um, people sitting in this room with me. Um, so it's been a really cool experience to grow alongside and learn with people too, um, and to be able to kind of just really connect with people on a really wonderful level, mm -hmm. supportive level. So I'm gonna bust out some old city year stuff. Um, it's very, yeah, we have like our own culture. If you're a core member, I, I apologize. I know you're, you're probably at the end of your service year. Um, but there's a phrase that we use. It was um, students first, collaboration always. And I feel like a lot of the leaders in Brown School um, really focus on that. They put the students first. We have so many of our administrative leaders that are super open to feedback. They always mm -hmm. ask for feedback. They always want us to meet with them to get coffee, get free snacks from them. Our dean is very much the same way. Like she loves hearing from us and they do put an effort to making that change. It's not just, oh, thank you for your for your comment. I'm just gonna put this aside. No, they actually they get involved into implementing that change and mm -hmm. give students updates. And the collaboration is, it influences us as well because there's a huge emphasis on teamwork at the Brown School and that's really essential in uh, the growing professional field as well. And there's an also, it's not just, it's very, in, the collaboration is intentional for the student too. Um, as I mentioned earlier with the value proposition um, that the Brown School is so connected to um, the community and highly involved, um, I had a field instructor connect me to my upcoming internship with the Federal Reserve Bank. And it's interesting because um, at the business school, it's mandatory for students to um, do a summer internship and students are looking, scra scrambling, looking for internships now with big companies. But I found my internship really early because I made that connection last year mm -hmm. through the Brown School, not the business school, <laughs> the Brown School. So. Thank you. Um, I actually I want to go back to what you said, Caitlin, um, talking about 
your identities and how the Brown School has responded to those in a really positive way. And because we have a question about that, how are particularly vulnerable students, first generation, low income, those who have been in foster care, et cetera, how are they given support and given equitable opportunity to acquire a degree at the Brown School? And, and you can certainly speak more to that and then anyone else who'd like to speak to that too. For sure. Um, I would say it's salient for me in the student groups. Um, mm -hmm. And also through the, um, not programs, but they have actual offices like the diversity and inclusion office. Yeah. Like, the support offices. Yes. Yeah. That, um, there's also a whole Facebook page for first generation students mm -hmm. um, at mm -hmm. the Brown School. Um, the various um, affinity groups that are on campus. Um, I would say all of those kind of um, help me along every day, I, I feel like. I feel like I'm definitely supported in, like, in all of my identities, for sure. So I feel like it captures a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and also in classes, too. Um, even in classes, like there's a required class, as it should be, for um, social justice and human diversity. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that here, like, the professors do not shy away from the controversial topics yeah. um, and they they do advocate for you know people who were not handed things were not um, born in privilege so mm -hmm. I would say the support is coming from all sides from administration from the student groups for like your, your social life my social life <laughs> yeah. and hopefully it's gonna be yours um, and in the classroom so mm -hmm. yeah that's great thank you so mm -hmm. much anything that any of you would like to add to I mean, there's always, uh, like, there's two components to this, not necessarily mutually exclusive. There's, like, having a diverse population, but there's also feeling included in part of your, like, where you are, your new home. Um, so while I think there's always more that institutions like WashU could be doing to work on diversity, definitely the inclusion factor, I felt, um, has been prominent at the Brown School. So having support resources for, I'm an international student, and there was a time where, like, my visa fell through, so I was stuck <laughs> back home. Um, and my community here really pulled through to rally resources, to kind of work with my professors to make sure that my journey back was kind of a smooth transition, um, that I was ha getting all the resources I needed to kind of work with the US government. I mean, it was a really taxing time and I couldn't have done it without the Brown School. Um, but then also there's resources, there's like inner school graduate student groups that I've worked on organizing events for South Asian students like me. So that has f definitely helped me feel more at home. Um, so both inside the Brown School and outside the Brown School, I definitely do feel included in our community. Um, so it's always good to keep in mind that um, like there's diversity initiatives, there's inclusion initiatives, and the Brown School tends to balance both pretty well, in my opinion. That's great. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, one of the questions, uh, going back to cost of living and the financial considerations, uh, how does the cost of living in St. Louis affect your life as a grad student? And anyone can speak to this if you'd like to. So even though I'm like a homebody person and I don't like going out and doing lots of fun things, there are so many fun things to do, um, especially in the summer um, here. So if you can and you choose to come to watch you for the Brown School, come a little early. There's lots of really wonderful things to do for free at Forest mm -hmm. Park, which is right by the Brown School. There's tons of festivals, lots of museums, and the zoo are open to the public all of the time um, so there's just a lot of great also like community events too at non-for-profits and agencies lots of yeah. showings of films and things like that and I think that's so unique to the St. Louis community there's so many different things that you can do that are accessible to people regardless of your socioeconomic status or your um, ability to mm -hmm. um, pay for you know all these kind of really cool things um, and then too, just like cost of living as far as like rent and things is a lot lower here than in a lot of other cities um, that I looked at. Yeah. Um, I looked at a lot of like, kind of like urban metropolitan areas and I would say that easily my cost of living is about half of that here <laughs> in St. Louis. Yeah, I don't think you quite under, like you never get how big of an anxiety housing is until you're in a space like St. Louis where mm -hmm. that burden just like lifted from my shoulders because I was looking between St. Louis and another city where my monthly rent would have been five times what I'm paying right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So being here has been amazing just to not have that constant pressure yeah. um, or like a, a lower pressure to like, oh my God, I got to pay my rent. How am I going to make that 
that money. Um, so that stress has decreased. I don't have a car, so having we get a free transportation pass when we're here in St. Louis, being a WashU student. So I am completely reliant on public transportation, and it gets me everywhere I need to go. Mm -hmm. So if I need to get groceries, if I need to access like social opportunities, if I want to go to Forest Park, uh, travel between work and school and home, I can do that very easily using the public transportation system here. Um, so for sure, being in St. Louis has taken away a lot of those pressures. Like, how do I get to class? How do I um, like find the right kind of housing? How do I make sure that I'm paying rent and utilities on time? Mm -hmm. um, and then you don't feel bad like finding social opportunities because for me, a lot of Forest Park um, events, they're free. So that's what I do with my friends. There's um, a really thriving intercultural, so like multicultural community over here. Um, so that has been its greatest asset, in my opinion, as well. I like St. Louis. <laughs> awesome. We like it too a lot, I like it a lot. Um, great, thank you all so much. Next question, what is your favorite thing you've learned so far? <laughs> I've Big learned questions. that even though you, you know, you, I'm trying to think of like the right way to like say this, like there's always learning to do. And that was like such an incredibly humbling experience as a person who wants to like go and excel and do wonderful things. Like there's just always going to be opportunities to learn. So not necessarily just one thing, because there are so many things that I've really loved learning here. I think that I've learned a lot about myself and how I interact with spaces as a white person. Um, I think that I've learned a lot more about how to best advocate for clients whose identities maybe don't match mine. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about the importance of just like human relationship too. I think that that's so incredibly important and just like acknowledging um, that relationships are really powerful between people. Mm. Uh, for me, I think it's learning that opportunity comes from taking risks and making mm -hmm. failure. Um, I had an epiphany about two weeks ago and I realized, you know, I've, I've experienced a lot, a lot more failure the past year, but it's because I've been taking more risks. And not only do I have more failures, I've also had more achievements as well. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't take those risks, I wouldn't have experienced that. Mm -hmm. And now I feel less phased by, by failure. I think before I would have a lot of anxiety from, from taking risks and just over-calculating all my steps that it would be a lot of apprehension, a lot of analysis paralysis. And I've gotten used to <laughs> um, just, just trying it out. And I think uh, Washington University, the Brown School are great communities to try out different things because um, especially at the Brown School, it won't feel like a failure because you have people that support you and it's all a, a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I, like the tangible aspects of you know what what do you learn in your field specific skills that all has been great but I think for me humility was kind of the biggest lessons mm -hmm. I've been taking from the Brown School everywhere I go like the first thing I do is question the power I bring into a space the power dynamics of those around me and how we could you know can deconstruct some of these fallacious uh, foundations we build our lives on and then come to like a mutual understanding and like a collaborative and um, sort of equity focused way. That's been a big sort of uh, value based, like mindset based thing that I've learned. Um, and then definitely uh, oxymoronic in a way um, is just confidence in myself, confidence in my abilities. Um, not that I wasn't confident of my abilities before, but definitely I came into the space with so much anxiety with the imposter syndrome. Am I going to be good enough? This is a master's level program. Mm -hmm. Am I going to survive? Am I going to thrive? Am I going to make a difference out in the world, which is all I want to do? And yeah, like every, every single step of the way, it has been reinforced. So with every failure, with every achievement, it has constantly been reinforced that um, you know, when you're here, you've got the skills, you've got the talent, you've got the drive, and you can go out there and make a difference. I, those are the big takeaways. That's awesome. Um, for me, that's a very loaded question. Because <laughs> like Jonathan was stating earlier, um, you're always learning. Um, but I guess for me, I guess I would say that there's no winner in the oppression Olympics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that even though you may hold like multiple identities that do not come with privilege, you don't know everything there is to know about every other minority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I, I value that. Mm -hmm. And I think that keeps me in check, too. Um, and so, and that's what keeps my mind open to learning more about other people's identities as well. Because I definitely don't know it all. Never claim to know it all. Just put that out there. Um, 
But yeah, I would say that. And it's a, it's an ever evolving learning process for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's, there's never gonna be a time where you hit a glass ceiling of cultural competence. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate that. I respect that, I value that. And I learn from that. So I would say that's my favorite learning experience here. That's great. Thank you all so much. So I'm gonna be mindful of our time because Jonathan, Melanie, and Ashwarya have to leave us. Um, but I would love to ask if the three of you have any final pieces of advice for folks who are weighing out all of their options for graduate studies, um, if there's something that you wish you would have known, um, or just any type of advice that you'd like to give before you leave us. I guess for me um, is that there is no silly question to ask. Mm -hmm. um, it's not unwild to think that you couldn't talk to a faculty member that you might be interested in working with. Um, you know, just reaching out. Um, I know that you know admissions at the Brown School is super, super prioritizes connecting people. Um, <clears throat> sorry, um, admissions really values the importance of connecting um, prospective, admitted, or you know enrolling students, connecting them with current students, with mm -hmm. other staff supports, with faculty groups, things like that. Um, so, you know, throw the wild question out there and, you know, I think that admissions and just the Brown School community in general is really supportive in trying to get that person the answer that they need. Um, I think yeah, it's such a fast experience as well. Um, once you get in, you're on the ground running, so make the experience your own. There's so many things that are offered here, and really take advantage of that. Um, I'm here for another year. I think these two are graduating already. I'm going to miss them so much. I've known them since um, I first got here, and, and they're amazing. So you'll also attain friendships that last forever. And Caitlin. Like we just became <laughs> friends this year, and I'm glad we'll be together for yeah. another year. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> This is real. <laughs> real. <laughs> I think this process comes with so much anxiety and so much stress. Oh yeah. I mean, who didn't I ask when I was <laughs> trying to make my decision between schools? I remember I sent like a million emails to the admissions office here as well, just trying to get all those logistics figured out so that um, the spreadsheet that I made, which is similar to the one you were mentioning, could be like full of information so I'd be most informed when making my decision. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's important to know what you want out of this. I think. If you go into a master's program, you should go in with intentionality. Mm -hmm. If you come here, it should be with some goals in mind of what you want to get out of it, or at least what are the questions you want to ask while you're here. Um, I came into this program not exactly knowing what my specific interests were, but I'm like gladly <laughs> leaving knowing more about where I want to go in the world, what I want to do. Um, so to make this opportunity worth it, I think you should come here with like a list of expectations, a list of goals, a list of like, maybe some things you want to learn more about or achieve because then with intentionality you'll get the most out of this experience. Uh, I do recommend making a spreadsheet with all of your options because it makes it so much clearer when you're trying to like work with your mentors or your family or your friends and you're trying to make a decision between schools. Um, yeah, and definitely reach out to us in the admissions office for more information because we're here to be very candid with you and we do provide like the student focused experience that hopefully will inform your decision better. And I think just adding on very quickly, um, have that list of goals, but also be open to other things popping mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. um, I had mentioned like, I was never interested in policy work, um, but just experiences at the Brown School kind of tailored me into that direction a little bit. And it was such an incredible opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of engage in that space that I didn't think social work necessarily was part of, but it's so incredibly mm -hmm. part of policy mm -hmm. work. Um, and, and just like, just be open to also other goals kind of sneaking mm -hmm. their way onto your list too. That's the best part. <laughs> Awesome. Well, yeah, how about we got, if you want to provide some last <laughs> pieces of advice, because I know we yes. are running low on time, right. and I also want to say, I know we have so many questions that were asked, and we will be sure to follow up with you after the session, so hold on to those questions, because we'll follow up with you very soon, but yeah, Caitlin, if you want to share just any advice that you have for folks who are considering the Brown School. Um, I wish I would have known that I would have been taught, like, things different like from outside of my interests. Um, I thought that grad school was strictly like in your specific lane, like mm -hmm. my concentrations in mental health, so I thought mm -hmm. I would be strictly in mental health classes, clinical things, micro practice, all the things. Um, but I guess that's a good thing that I wasn't because the Brown School does offer a very well-rounded um, education. Um, 
and curriculum and you kind of start exploring other options. Although I'm still true to mental health. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I would have known that I would not just be strictly on mental health classes because you know, you, you kind of get a little yeah. frustrated when plans change a little bit, who doesn't? So yes, but it was a good thing in the end. It was great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The three of you may leave. Thank you so much for sharing <laughs> Thanks. everything. Um, Caitlin and I are going to hang out and provide just a few more last minute updates for you all. So um, want to talk about a few upcoming deadlines and some things for admitted students. First and foremost, um, our upcoming application deadline is March 1st. So if you are considering um, applying for fall 2019. Good news is you still have some time. Um, so work on those applications and getting them in. And if you have questions for admissions, feel free to reach out. Um, after March 1st, we have enrolling admissions. So um, as we receive applications, you should be receiving your admission decision within six to eight weeks of submitting your application. The next update that I have is for admitted students. Um, so if you've been admitted, congratulations. We're so, so Yay. thrilled to welcome <laughs> you to the Brown School. Um, and we would love to host you here for a weekend for Admitted Students Weekend, which is April 5th and 6th. You know, Jonathan talked about how beneficial it was for him. And so if you'd like to learn more and register for that weekend, you can go to our website. Also under Admitted Student Resources on our website, there are a variety of things, updates for admitted students there, including um, a place to confirm your intent to enroll, financial aid resources, and a whole slew of other things. So check there for updates constantly. Um, next steps then too, and if you are considering applying, please go to our website and apply. If not for this upcoming semester, uh, or this upcoming academic year, then for other years too, um, our priority deadlines are always December 15, March 1, and then after March 1, rolling admissions. So that is all that we have to share with you all today. We're going to leave with um, a few pieces of information about our next virtual info session, which will be on March 20th, where we'll talk about our faculty and we'll hear from some faculty voices um, if you have questions or suggestions for upcoming virtual info sessions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Caitlin, for you. providing your insight. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much.